Thank you for joining us on the porch. I'm Jane Garibay, State Representative for the 60th District, which is part of Windsor and all of Windsor Locks. Today, we're going to talk about working from home, and we have three interesting guests that are going to share their experiences. First, we have Paula Pierce. I've known Paula for more than 17 years, and we've worked on many projects together. Paula has owned and operated Hosting Connecticut, where she and her team provide everything from business for business needs to thrive online, including website development, hosting, marketing, and more. I was also excited when I met Flavia. Flavia is originally from Arequipa, Peru, and brings a, a, a unique perspective to life. She has been in the U United States for almost 20 years now. Flavia currently works for the Town of Windsor as the Community Development Specialist. She and her husband are proud parents of a three-year-old who attends Oliver Ellsworth pre-K program. And I also have known John Waveris for many, many years. Um, John is a computer programmer, web designer that's lived in Windsor for 20 years. He's working from home these days and has two small kids. Zoom meetings give him flashbacks to the late 90s when he was part of a company that invented on cl online class software. Welcome everyone. Thank you. You can hear that train there, Paula. <laughs> that for me. Um, so, you know, I know, um, Paula, you've been working from home, but it's different now. John, you have an office. Um, both outside the home and in the home. And Flavia, you work at Town Hall. Paul, I'm gonna ask you first, do you have a designated workspace? I do. Um, I have a small office space right in front of a big picture window so I can see what's going on outside, thankfully, um, because sometimes I feel like I'm the only person in the world right now until I get a phone call or, or see another human being. So. <laughs> but yes, I have my little space. Okay, John, how about you? Yeah, I haven't been to my real office in a couple months, but um, I used to uh, work from the basement before that, so I just sort of quickly moved back into the basement. <laughs> into the basement. I'll fix it up soon. <laughs> mm, that's good. And Flavia, how's it for you? Because for you, it is a total difference. Yeah, right. so I'm... I'm actually splitting my time. Part of my time I'm here at home and part of my time I'm in town hall. Um, here it's very makeshift. Uh, we brought a table from the basement where we have the computer. Um, but right now I'm talking to you guys through my phone. Uh, thankfully my daughter is pretty quiet. I got her watching a movie right there. Uh, so FYI, there might be a few interact uh, interactions. <laughs> Right, no, and that's fine, we totally understand. That's why I was a little late coming, I had to put the dog out that was desperate, so I had to do that before I came on the call. Um, so one of the things that I noticed for myself, because I've also been isolated and at home for the most part, and doing my work from home, is how, how do you minimize distractions? I find that I get distracted by everyday life and, um, you know, things going on, the dog, things that it wouldn't normally distract me. How are you coping with that? Who wants to answer first? Fabia, how are you coping? Okay. Oh, uh, initially, I, I was fighting it, uh, but you know, it, it didn't take long for me to realize that I couldn't really do everything. Um, so now, you know, if there's a distraction, and really the distractions are my daughter. Um, so if there's a distraction, I just go with the flow because otherwise, you know, I'm not well up here and I don't get anything done. So. Right. Right. How about you, John? Um, it's the same thing. You know, if the kids need me, I have to stop, but, uh, I kind of made progress by, uh, scheduling out everything I'm going to work on. And, uh, most days I have to be done by noon. So I get up as early as I can without, um, you know, sacrificing too much sleep and, and I just try to work on everything as fast as I can and then, and then play with the kids all afternoon. Right. Do you have to homeschool at all? I mean, we, were doing the, we went to some of the online classes um, 
but it, my, my daughter didn't seem to respond well to it. She would cry on the days that she went to them. And I think that nursery school or preschool doesn't translate as well to Zoom meetings as you, you know, right. maybe. Well, I, I understand it because it's even hard for me. Those of you that know me, I like the one-on-one, face-to-face -on -one, -face conversations. Um, I don't like phone. You know, Zoom makes it a little bit better because I can see you, so that's great. Um, but I think for a lot of us, that's hard. And what about you, Paula? Well, I've been working from home uh, for many, many years, so I'm used to distractions. My distractions are a little different since I don't have any kids or dogs. I have um, the laundry right near me. I have the kitchen right near me. So for me, it's like, oh my God, things need to be done around here, but I've got to put my head down at my desk and actually look at what I'm doing and just try to focus. But I do take a lot of breaks too. So I'll get up for a few minutes to make tea and whatever and go around and, you know, sometimes so I know that before you used to um, go out and go to one of the local restaurants or coffee shops and spend hours and meet with clients so that's been a big change for you too hasn't it huge change and I didn't really realize it at first when this all started because I felt before like I didn't have that many meetings but I did have like you said time away where I could be around people get my work done but still be social um, and now I find myself, and I used to kind of hate meetings, and now I find myself like, oh my God, I should probably schedule some calls. I want to see some people. So that's actually been a change. I've been seeking out meetings, which is very unlike me. <laughs> right. Um, so, you know, well, that brings it, you know, the social interaction is important to all of us and how COVID has changed that, right? Um, how has it changed? Uh, John, what's it like being in there for two whole months? You know, you've been in self-isolation with your family. Um, how's that going? How has it affected you? I mean, every week's a little different. I'm, I am not looking far in the future, I think. I'm just saying, what do I need to get my work done today? Uh, maybe I'm looking a week in advance, mostly. And, okay. uh, um, it's weird to drive my car now. I don't know if you're the same way. Like we rarely get out and then you get in the car and it's like, oh yeah, I can steer. And, you know? I have to admit, sometimes I get in the car just to go for a drive. Yeah, right. <laughs> get out because I've tried to isolate as much as possible for Jenny. So, but sometimes we'll just go for a ride, you know? So um, it is. Paula, were you going to say something? Oh, I was going to say about driving, you know, it's funny for me because I don't drive that much. I didn't before and I really don't now. So when I do get in the car, it is like an unusual experience. I'm like, oh, yeah, I've got to focus. I've got to steer. I've got to press the gas. I've got to look around me. It's just like a whole you different to thing. Drive there. You kind of avoid it. <laughs> Flavia, for you, because you, you know, you live and work near each other. So do you walk to work? Yeah, I, I, I walk to work. I rarely drive. And, you know, when groceries, it's really my husband that's taking care of that. So, um, and when we need, you know, smaller things, we just go walking around here. So I really rarely get in the car, which is good. Well, that's why they say, if you've been reading the articles that are environment, you know, things like the canal in France, you know, they could see the jellyfish and things that haven't been seen in years. Um, but I fear that once we go back to normal, all that's going to be lost again, unless people realize, hey, it wasn't so bad not using my car all the time. You know, can I walk, um, et cetera. What advice do you have for people that are experiencing, you know, what do you do if you're on a call and your kids start screaming or Paula, your mic walks in, you know, um, what do you do? Are people understanding of that? I think so. I mean, I've, we've had that happen a few times, you know, and I think that's very common right now. People walking through the back of a Zoom call, you just kind of get used to that. Mm -hmm. I don't know, you know, I, Mike is quiet. He doesn't throw tantrums in the background, so I can't speak to that. But so, so far, far, so good. <laughs> so far, so good. John, how, how are people coping? Because you do a lot of client also calls, et cetera. Yeah, for, I mean, it's interesting when it's happening to you because you know, when it happens to someone else, they always seem so embarrassed and you're kind of like, oh, it's no big deal. But uh, I remember just a week or two, I was in a meeting that was not before noon. So it changed the schedule. So my daughter's 
knew, you know, I was available and they had to be in the call with me. And I was mortified. It was just the worst call. And Paula was in it, I think. And I was just like, oh, <laughs> <I love> it. <laughs> it was the worst. It was the worst, but it was great too. <laughs> it was. was, it? It was. I mean, the two girls were all over you, wanting your attention and, you know, trying to get their way. But everybody understood. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah, you have it because you go to work a couple of days and you're at home. Is that hard to do to juggle between the two? Actually, for me, that's great because it really gives me a, a breathing space outside of home because, you know, she's three. I'm sure, John, you have, you know, a little one. You probably have those issues, too. But it's very demanding. Uh, so being at town hall, it's it's sort of a break. But <laughs> that's I know for her, it's, it's very hard because she doesn't really have a lot of structure. Uh, so, you know, I, I see her very, very concerned whether she's going to be with dad today or with mom. And of course, when she's, when she's with me, she does one thing. When she's with dad, she does something else. So, um, yeah. and that's affecting her. Yeah. So. You know, trying to get into a routine when you work outside, you have to get up at a certain hour, get ready, you know, leave, you have a schedule. And we don't realize that for kids, that's really necessary. They like to have some kind of a schedule. And I know Jenny always asks, you know, what's for dinner tomorrow? You know, are we doing something? Um, and she likes a kind of routine that she knows where she's going. And there's so much uncertainty right now you know, that it's hard. I can't imagine, um, you know, being a parent, trying to run your business, um, all the different things that our businesses have to deal with, um, but we're employed, right? So that's a good thing. Yes. So any words of wisdom that you want to leave off with? I was going to say, I like to have a schedule too, more than I used to. So in the morning, I try to, you know, 10 minutes of meditation, 10 minutes of brain games before I actually get into work. And I've been trying to do it. It doesn't work every day, but I'm trying. <laughs> and you walk almost every day, don't you? I try to, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is important. Okay, Flavia, what about you? I would say, you know, as along the lines of what Paula is saying, um, just trying to carve some time for yourself and your sanity it's key because you know there are a lot of things yeah so that would be the number one thing thing john yeah um i guess just trying to stay as healthy as he can with like so getting more sleep was helping me and uh you know not stressing out uh, needlessly just get it done and work on the next thing Right. And I think I would have learned this before now. And I, I knew that sleep was important, but mm -hmm. after the virus, I learned more how important that sleep is to keeping your body healing, to allow it to do um, a lot of things. I also like what um, you said about almost taking today and looking at today and not getting overwhelmed with all the noise out there. There is a lot of noise and, you know, how do we take care of our families? How do we work? How do we take care of ourselves? All have to be priorities. Um, do we get to meet her? Is she right there, Lavia? She just went past straight to the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, but I'm glad. I think every day about what um, you guys are doing, and I don't know if I could, as far as children go, you know, you're all my heroes. Um, and just being out there. <laughs> Um, here she hey, you. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I want to thank all yeah. of you for coming on to On the Porch. Um, I hope people get some, you know, ideas on um, how to be going through all this together. And we hear it all the time, but we are, we're together in this, you know, if we all help each other and um, whether it's in business, in our lives, whatever. Um, we will get past this. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you to Win TV um, for uh, filming this for us today. Until next time. Thank you.